girl 8 years old dies after being violently sucked into hotel swimming pool pipes. An 8-year-old girl died after being violently sucked into piping at a hotel swimming pool, her family has said. Aaliyah Jaiko had been enjoying a dip with her family at the Doubletree Hotel in Houston and Texas when the tragedy happened on Saturday, March 23. Lawyers representing the family said she was in the Lazy River style pool when she was violently sucked into a 12 to 16 inch unsecured gap in the swimming pool flow system. Her body was later found around 6 meters deep inside the piping. The family is suing the hotel for more than $1 million in damages. Police are also investigating. The lawsuit said Aaliyah's mother Daniela Jaiko raised the alarm after quickly realizing her daughter was missing at around 4.50 p.m. Following a frantic search she asked hotel staff to look at CCTV footage, but management denied her request and explained that police would have to be present to view the video surveillance, it is alleged. Ms. Jaiko called police and officers examined the CCTV after arriving at the scene. The footage revealed the 8-year-old had gone under the water and never resurfaced. The pool was drained and her body was found wedged in the pipes of malfunctioning pool equipment at 11.30 p.m. Lawyers representing the family described it as a senseless tragedy. In a tribute posted online, Ms. Jaiko said she was struggling to deal with her loss. She added, I hope to see you again one day and you'll keep looking at me and you'll get that big smile that was contagious with joy. You gave yourself to love always with your heart so noble. I will love you for all eternity. You are the most beautiful thing God has given me and after every battle we went through together we didn't win this one. Rest in peace my beautiful Wera. Forever you. The family's wrongful death lawsuit names Unique Crown Hospitality LLC and Hilton Worldwide Holdings Incorporated. A Hilton spokesperson told, Hilton offers our sincere condolences to the family and loved ones in the tragic loss of a young girl at the Doubletree by Hilton Houston Brook Hollow. This property is independently owned and operated by a third party. Hilton does not own, manage, or control the day-to-day -day operations of the property and does not employ any of the property's staff or its third-party operators. We understand that the property is cooperating fully with all authorities investigating the incident. Houston police said detectives were awaiting autopsy results in the apparent drowning of a child and the investigation is continuing. Famous door prop from Titanic that saved Rose, but not Jack, all float sells at auction. The piece of wood that has sparked consistent debates among film enthusiasts since the release of James Cameron's Titanic has sold at an auction for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The infamous door used to keep Kate Winslet's character Rose afloat once the ship went down in the blockbuster has sold for $718,750. Arguments over whether Jack, Leonardo DiCaprio, could have fit on the approximately 8-foot-long, 41-in-a-wide door instead of freezing to death so love interest Rose could remain above water have only grown louder since the film's release in 1997. The auction notes allude to the controversy, saying, the iconic prop has caused much debate from fans, many of whom have argued that the floating wood panel could have supported both Jack and Rose, making his fateful decision to stay in the frigid water an empty gesture. It also points out the prop, while widely known to be a door, is in fact a copy of part of a door frame just above the first-class lounge entrance of the real Titanic. Debate has been raging for so long that director Cameron revealed in 2022 he had done a thorough forensic analysis to prove Jack couldn't fit on it. We have done a scientific study to put this whole thing to rest and drive a stake through its heart once and for all, Cameron told Post Media. The study's outcome was shared in a National Geographic special the following year. We took two stunt people who were the same body mass of Kate and Leo and we put sensors all over them and inside them and we put them in ice water and we tested to see whether they could have survived through a variety of methods and the answer was, there was no way they both could have survived. Only one could survive, Cameron explained. Asked if he regretted the finale's outcome, the filmmaker said, no, he needed to die. It's like Romeo and Juliet. It's a movie about love and sacrifice and mortality. The love is measured by the sacrifice. 
Heritage Auctions, which the Worn Outwood panel sold through on Saturday, said it had a plaque on the back which includes the names of the lead actors, the film's title and the names of the production companies involved, along with a description of the scene it was used in. It was the highest-selling prop in the three-day, Treasures from Planet Hollywood auction, which made $15.6 million with 1,600 items on offer. 16 items sold for six-digit figures, Heritage Auctions said, including Bill Murray's Red Rose Bowling Ball from Kingpin for $350,000 and Tobey Maguire's Black Symbiote Suit from 2007 Spider-Man 3 for $125,000. The father of Taylor Swift will not be prosecuted for the alleged assault. Taylor Swift's father will not face police charges over accusations he assaulted a photographer in Australia. Ben McDonald had told police that Scott Swift struck him in the face in Sydney on February 27. The alleged confrontation happened after the 72-year-old and his megastar daughter left a yacht following the final show of her era's tour in Australia. At the time, a representative for the pop star accused members of the media of behaving aggressively towards her during the interaction. Mr. McDonald, 51, described the incident at the time as a punch in the chops that didn't require medical assistance. Following an investigation, New South Wales police have confirmed that no further action will be taken. In a statement, the force said, officers attached to North Shore Police Area Command have conducted an investigation following a report of an assault at Neutral Bay Wharf about 2.30 a.m. on Tuesday, February 27. No further police action. The 34-year-old star performed four nights in Sydney as part of the international leg of the Eras tour. The tour, which is due to come to Europe in May, is the highest grossing of all time, having been the first to surpass $1 billion in revenue. Mike Tyson wants to use edible cannabis ears to deliver a devastating blow. Former world heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson is hoping to deliver a knockout blow with his new cannabis product, Edibles in the Shape of Nibbled Ears. The bizarre products are a nod to when Tyson infamously bit off part of the ear of his opponent Evander Holyfield in their WBA heavyweight championship bout in Nevada in 1997. The edibles have been released by Tyson 2.0, a cannabis company founded by the iconic boxer known as Iron Mike. They come in flavors including black eye berry, sour apple punch and watermelon. The edibles are available from the company's online store, but have already been spotted in dispensaries in New York. The 57-year-old is reportedly planning a promotional tour at shops next month, including an event in Times Square. Not everyone in the cannabis industry is said to be enthused about the release of Tyson's product. The former boxer was convicted of rape in 1992 and has also been accused of domestic violence. Stu Zakim, a publicist for the cannabis dispensary The Travel Agency in Union Square, told The New York Post, they're honoring this convicted rapist and wife beater as a role model. We should use much better role models. Tyson's 1997 bout against Holyfield, the second time they had met in the ring, became known as the bite fight following Iron Mike's act of partial cannibalism. Tyson's boxing license was revoked by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and he was fined $3 million. He retired from professional boxing in 2005 with 50 wins, including 44 knockouts and 6 losses. Earlier this month he announced he will be fighting YouTuber turned boxer Jake Paul in a bout that will be shown live on Netflix later this year. <laughs> Beyonce announces the track listing for her next country album. Beyonce has released her track list for her forthcoming country album Act 2, Cowboy Carter. On the Superstar's Instagram account, fans were given a sneak peek of her new songs, which included the previously released Texas Hold M and 16 Carriages. The tracklist also contained American Requiem, Blackbird, Protector, My Rose, Bodyguard, Daughter, Spaghetti, Alligator Tears, Smoke Hour 2, Just For Fun, Two Most Wanted, Levi's Jeans, Flamenco, Yeah Yeah, Oh Louisiana, Desert Eagle, River Dance, Two Hands To Heaven, Tyrant, Sweet Honey Buckin', and Amen. 
One song appears to be called The Linda Martell Show, a reference to the groundbreaking country performer who became the first black woman to play at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. There is also mention of Dolly P, likely a reference to Dolly Parton, and a track titled Jolene, a reference to one of Parton's best-known songs. Parton revealed earlier this month that she thinks Beyoncé has recorded a cover of her 1973 hit. Well, I think she has. I think she's recorded Jolene and I think it's probably gonna be on her country album, which I'm very excited about," she said. The tracklist also mentions Smoke Hour Willie Nelson, but it is not immediately clear if Nelson is involved with the project. U.S. state bans children under 14 years old from social media in sweeping new law. Children under 14 will be barred from joining social media in Florida from next year. Signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis, the legislation directs social media firms to delete the accounts of under 14s. Children aged 14 and 15 will also need parental consent before signing up for platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. Companies who fail to delete accounts risk being sued on behalf of children, with the minor awarded up to $10,000, and could also be fined up to $50,000 per violation of the law. It's set to come into effect in Florida from January next year, but challenges by firms claiming it violates the U.S. Constitution are expected. The state's Republican Speaker Paul Renner called the bill his top priority and said that a child in their brain development doesn't have the ability to know that they're being sucked into these addictive technologies. The bill also defines material harmful to children as including content lacking serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value for minors, in addition to patently offensive e-depictions of sexual conduct and indecency. Firms that fail to prohibit access to such material or prohibit future access to a minor after it is reported are liable to the minor for such access, including court costs and reasonable attorney fees. Mr. Renner admitted he knows social media firms will sue the second this is signed, but said, we're going to beat them. We're going to beat them and we're never, ever going to stop. Mr. DeSantis, who recently suspended his campaign to be the Republican nominee for president, also backed the bill and said, We not only satisfied me, but we also satisfied, I think, a fair application of the law and constitution. NetChoice, a trade group linked with Meta, TikTok and X, has claimed that the Florida policy creates ID for the internet and puts restrictions on all Floridians regardless of age. We're disappointed to see Governor DeSantis sign onto this route. There are better ways to keep Floridians, their families, and their data safe and secure online without violating their freedoms," Carl Sabo, NetChoice Vice President and General Counsel, said in a statement.